In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of complementary observables. So in the previous few videos, we've been looking at the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And the uncertainty principle is actually a lot more general than just dealing with position and momentum. It actually deals with any general set of what we call complementary observables, right? So the uncertainty principle can apply to any set of complementary observables. The two we looked at already were just position and momentum. But what are complementary observables? Well, complementary observables are, um, are observables in quantum mechanics that apply to complementary operators. So let's consider these, uh, let's consider two operators, omega one and omega two. So what we mean by complementary operators are if we have uh, omega one and omega two, if we come through and operate on a wave function with omega two first, and then operate with omega one, we get a different result than if we operate with omega one first and then operate with omega two, right? So basically you can't interchange the position of complementary operators, right? This, what we say is in uh, mathematics is that these operators do not commute. Right, so these operators do not commute. You cannot uh, commute these operators in any order that you want. Um, if you come through with omega two first, then you get a different result than if you come through and operate with omega one first, right? So these are what we call complementary operators and any observables that correspond to those complementary operators are called complementary observables and are limited by the uncertainty principle. Now, if you're familiar with linear algebra, you kind of already have a sense of of this anti-commutation property, right? So, um, you know, in, in general, in linear algebra, if you have a matrix A and B, it's not necessarily true that AB will be B equal to BA, right? When we're dealing with just numbers, of course, it's going to always commute. Five times three will be equal to three times five. But when you're dealing with operators, they may not always commute. And when they don't commute, that means that the observables are comp the operators are complementary. So the way that I like to think about this, the way you can kind of remember this is that, you know, these complementary operators, they, they need one another. When something complements something, it, it, you know, it, it provides something that the other thing cannot provide. Right. So if you look at the left and right hand side, you know, there's some different component when you uh, operate omega two on the wave function versus omega one. Right. This difference is how they complement each other. And the way that we quantify how these operators uh, complement each other is known as the commutator. Right, so there is a property known as the commutator, which is a way to quantify the difference between these two outcomes, right? So the notation for a commutator is we have square brackets and then we put in square brackets the two operators that we're comparing, right? In this case, we'll use omega one and omega two, right? You just put a comma between them in the commutator and basically what the commutator is, is, you know, the quantification of this difference between the two, right? Operating with omega two first versus operating with omega one first. Right. So this is the commutator. Basically, you're going to apply this product of operators first and then subtract it from this product of operators and, and you get the difference between those two outcomes. Like I said, it just basically quantifies how these operators complement one another, right? Now this commutator relationship is so important that we can actually use it to redefine the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in a more general way. So basically the more general way of writing the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is the following. You'll have some uncertainty in omega one Right. Some. Yeah. Some uncertainty in omega one, whatever property that re refers to. Some uncertainty in omega two. And that's going to be greater than. Or equal to one half the absolute value of the commutator of these two operators. Right. So basically you will if in order to get 
the uncertainty relationship between any two complementary operators, you evaluate that commutator, put it over two, right? And that gives you the relationship between the uncertainty of those complementary operators. Okay, so that's a, a introduction to complementary operators and commutators. In the next video, I'll show you that the position and momentum are complementary observables. We'll evaluate its commutator and show you where that uh, lower bound in the uncertainty principle actually comes from.